Hello, I'm uh, Trevor Lakey from the Health Board in Glasgow, and I'm going to talk to you about mental health. So, first of all, a quick check, how's your headspace doing? <laughs> Flagging a bit, maybe? I'm going to recommend you switch to your dessert brains now, because we are getting pretty close to the end, so switch to your dessert brains for a bit of extra space. Um, I'm going to talk through some of the work we've been doing with Snook and... The microphone a bit nearer with Snoop and a range of other colleagues around looking at mental health and well-being and a programme with particularly working with young people, trying to move the cables from under my feet. Uh, and um, First of all, why mental health? I think you'll probably agree that it's one of the biggest public health and social issues in the world. I'm not going to read lots of statistics out to you, but whether we're talking globally or locally, often very underfunded and very under-resourced, but mental health uh, is a big, often, uh, often unmet challenge. So we've been working on it in many, many different ways. Uh, not just as a medical issue, of course, but as a social issue. So both the economic impact on people's mental health, but the social impact of having a mental health condition is often a bigger challenge than the mental health problem itself. So the CME campaign is a national anti-stigma campaign, but sadly stigma and discrimination is still a pretty massive challenge in society. So that's part of what we're trying to get into. We've got a very strong interest in young people's mental health, if you haven't seen it, check out the Prince's Trust Youth Index every year called the Macquarie Index. Some very, very scary statistics, particularly about young and unemployed people and the impact on anxiety levels, depression levels, suicidal ideation. I should probably mention that I'm, as well as leading for the health board on mental health improvement and lead on suicide prevention as well. So why service design is a set of approaches that we've been using. Uh, first of all, we've been scanning around the world that it seems to be a lot of very effective techniques. There's a piece of work from Nesta. The idea of getting close to people, learning about their experiences, not simply trying to fire expert solutions at them, how do you understand what works in service or in wider life, what might help them. As a health promotion person by trade, it chimed very, very rapidly with me, with the kind of principle of participatory working, of working with communities and understanding their needs and helping them design meshed very well. So it's this idea of getting human meshed in very closely with service design principles for us, so we find it a very natural fit. The main example I'm going to give you a quick, rapid flavour of is our work called Project 99, which started in 2013. You can see some of our partners, Snook, Young Scott, Mental Health Foundation, and a range of other local partners heavily involved in this, and it's exploring with young people how digital tools might support their mental health and wellbeing. Lots of sticky notepad notes, uh, as we've seen earlier, so a lot of interaction with young people. Uh, getting them both to explore their issues in their lives. With, if you look on the website, the iMind link that you'll see in a second, uh, both positive and negative experiences are using digital resources uh, and, and the web experience, uh, but also doing a lot of co-design work about what solutions might look like. To our great pleasure and surprise, one of the groups come up with their own youth mental health manifesto. Here's one of the, of the pieces of content from that. Improve the quality of online content, we rely on it. And, this, and they presented it and blew the minds of one of my senior <coughs> managers in November 2013. Uh, and this idea that for uh, service planners, uh, working with digital was a bit alien, so we really do need to kind of challenge our thinking about how we offer support and resources. Here's another one of their manifesto elements. Think about family and friends needing support too. It's not just about individual care. How do you think about the wider social context that support needs to be offered in? And here's one of the ideas they've come up with, which we now intend to work and turn into more detail. Support squares is the idea of support and supporters. Can, you, can we create a range of ways on and offline that young people can support their peers? We heard in this session back in November 2013 of some really scary incidents of young people being made aware of, the, of their pals' major challenges, suicidal thoughts and so on. So there are the carers in many cases. We've been delighted to receive uh, a European grant. Note to anybody applying for European grants, check there's not going to be a major crash of the euro before you get your grant, uh, and uh, have a time machine that you can go and uh, change that. So uh, the CHESS program is about collaborative uh, platforms for social good using digital tools, and we're the, we're the only UK uh, participants in that. We're now uh, working again with Snook and our other partners, Young Scott, Mental Health Foundation, and a range of local youth and other agencies. Uh, if you check out imind.com, it's on your little sheet. We're now rebranding the, the, the project. You'll find already a lot of the work from the first phase online, which is Youth Insights. Each of those is for real young people's stories. Here's another example, which is not digital, which is to be called Monster in the Hall, which shows it's not all about digital. This was a, a, young, a young people's carers project in Fife, designing the script for a play, which is called Monster in the Hall. The monster is not right. But the issue was designing the character of the play as a young carer who was sympathetic to the needs and issues that they experienced. 
All plain sailing? No, it's not. Uh, we've experienced a lot of challenges, things like the bureaucracies of the health boards and so on, mm-hmm. payment systems, procurement, um, banging your head the desk when you're blocked from looking at the blog because it's not allowed in the health board system. All these kind of things mm-hmm. are huge barriers to working in the kind of more participatory way, the timelines that people work on. But I think one of the big, big challenges is are we challenging ourselves constantly about the ladder of participation? Are we really uh, operating in a very participatory way or are we using a, a more kind of tokenistic method. You probably know 1969 is the year of the moon landing. For me, it was the year that Einstein's letter of publication was uh, in the public domain. Hackathons uh, can be a good idea, but again, do you design it in a such a way that um, it's full of 95% males, <coughs> young techie types, and everybody, let's say it's a community health hackathon, but nobody from the community was there because they had childcare and they weren't prepared to eat, eat stale pizzas. Put a look in a room somewhere and say, are we really participatory? And that's, that's a brick for my allotment. Building bricks, are we, if, we, if we haven't invested in the building blocks or things like youth work, community work, community infrastructure, then any amount of clever service design is going to fall flat because community capacity to contribute and participate will be missing. So think very hard about the, the building blocks that we need to be there already for it to flourish. I think what we've learned over the last couple of years is the kind of grit and determination to keep going despite lots of challenges and setbacks pays dividends. It's not a quick fix or a clever set of tools, it's a long t- long term commitment to working with, in our case, disadvantaged groups or groups of particular needs to learn more and to design with them what would help them have, have uh, better health and well being. So that's me. I've finished with very little to say my last slide, which lets me uh, just thank again all the contributors in our programmes to date. And it also gives Alex a good chance to get up early. So you can check me out on, on Twitter and uh, have a little conversation if you want about uh, iMind. You can see the iMind website as well. So thanks very much.